I'll just, I'll finish getting. Uh-oh. We're early, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, so you say. This is Flash and Graham Z. Co-hostage today at the door, uh, at In a Perfect World door table. Yeah, yeah. Figure I, out what show yeah. we're doing, damn it. In I, a perfect world, you'd know. I got, I got stoned and forgot. <laughs> Anyway, okay, still- anyway, so you're, yeah, I thought I was going to be a few minutes late, and I actually made it on time, but things, uh, they happen. Well, you know what? No, Grimmy uh, had it on here that it was not supposed to start until 3 Eastern I don't see time, why. which is in an hour. No, uh, well, then uh, it's, it was 8 o'clock my time. See, Cirque changed this, and I'm trying to do my best anyway. Yes, Grim, now... <laughs> so I thought it was 8 o'clock my time on Tuesday. Oh, he said it ain't 3 p.m. Eastern oh, time. Oh, okay, yeah. She didn't go to work today, so she screwed me all up. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So we do it an hour early. Uh, you got a problem with that, little missy? If we do, I won't record this. We'll just call you back in an hour. Uh, no, actually, I don't. If it's okay with Grim. Okay, Grim said now is fine. I ah, was just reading go. in my reading six. Blah, yeah, blah, 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 yeah. Cedars book, so. Yeah. So you don't want to do the radio today? No, I can do the radio. Actually, <laughs> I was reading some parts that, that uh, cause I know you said something about Black's Law, and I got to thinking about oh, Black's yeah. Law, and how well, did it come about? And Let me get the all. traditions out of the way. And, and okay, we'll, you get the we'll traditions out of the way. You know what? While you're doing that, seeing as uh, how we're yes, early, yes, I'm going to go fill my coffee cup. Why don't, why don't you, instead of that, why don't you go and fill your coffee cup? Hey, is that a better like idea? A hell of a plan. See, when it's See? somebody, ah, I have the magic. Ha ha. Anyway, uh, Grim. Hey. Uh, okay, I'm taking my headphones off to yeah, film a Go, be big, starling. Fly, 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 star. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks a lot, Grim, for all the tech support and fun stuff you find time to do to keep us on the radio doing this crazy stuff. And I'll stall long enough for Miss Mary to get back and do the intros to the uh, Bots and Bodies playing along today. And it's Tuesday. First, uh, is this the second Tuesday of the year? We're at, uh, can you turn that down, Cirque? The head, Cirque? Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot the TV was on and it's so loud I can hear it over myself. Anyway, uh, what do we got here? We're going to get... Grammy's getting coffee. <laughs> I'll just do the intro myself. We've got Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Prince, Asmo, Chelsea, Doni, Graham, Z, Java, Dr. Two, Meister, Brow, Poopster, Rob, Works, Rome's Van, White, Vinny, Weather, Dork, Phantom, CC66, Chaskira, Circle, Hello, Rooney, Cyborg, Noodle, Dem, Van Meter, E-Man, and Sib, me, Grumpy, Gromit, Jays, Nines, Jays, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, Salt Lake City, Mike, Slim Jim, Slim, Smart As, The Holiest Roger, and The Pigs. So if you're in a typey chatting room, you go over to the reallibertymedia.com, and then you open up the main page thing, and it gives you a choice on the right about chat room. And that's where you yeah. go in there and you make up a crazy ass name like we all did, and uh, start chitter chattering with Miss Mary, right, Miss Mary? Yeah, right. And you know what? Hmm. In a perfect world, hmm. we would not have to deal with bodily functions, because as soon as I went over and poured more coffee in my coffee cup, I had other bodily functions. Yeah. Instead. You know, when you drink coffee first, we drink the coffee, and then mm. a little later we have to go release the coffee. And so, yeah. It so puts there, the coffee in a perfect on world, we wouldn't yes. have to do that. Yeah, we would. How do you know that maybe this is perfect and not doing it would be way more fucked up than doing it? <laughs> Well, yeah, if it's you didn't all... go and release the coffee that you took in, then, then your really... eyes would be either brown or yellow. It's all hey, a matter of brown. perspective. Are they? Really? Yeah, are you my sure? eyes are brown. How do I know that you're not just telling me that and they're like they're blue? Actually, they're kind of, it depends on the mm. day. Sometimes they're brown, sometimes they're hazel, sometimes they're almost green. 
My mother said I was born with blue eyes, but they browned on me. Do you know everybody's born with blue eyes? Well, whatever. I didn't know that. I just remembered she said that to me. But really? <laughs> How do you know? I mean, like, what are you, an eye person? Go because around I've gone poking around in everybody's eyes. Every, I have peeked at every baby born on this planet, and yeah. I've opened their yeah. eyeball sockets up, and I've gone, yeah. look, they're blue. <laughs> So I got you on fire with that black slaw thing, huh? Well, and I I actually just got off the phone with my brother, Fudd, hmm. and he and I were talking about that, and he said, what is black slaw? And I went, oh, ho, ho, beautiful, ho. baby. Ho, ho. Yeah. So I started explaining it to him, and then I sent him the link yeah, that's what to you that do. 13th Amendment thing. Mm -hmm. But um, actually, the black slaw thing is has has been a puzzle piece that fit into some of the other things that I have been perusing of late. And good. so good, good, good. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm on book eight dash one of the ringing cedars uh -huh. and uh, the part where I'm at right now, um, Anastasia is asking Vladimir to use some logical thinking when it comes to, um, you know, the world around us and how did we get here and all that other fun stuff. And I read that part and I thought, Flash is wanting to do Black's Law. How did Black's Law come about? When did Black's Law come about? What's the whole purpose behind Black's Law? And so my brain started going down this tangent. Mm -hmm. And uh, and along with it, it started. I started getting, and I, I even wrote down questions. You want to hear the questions? Well, why not? That's what we do here at the... You know, in a perfect world radio podcast, <laughs> we talk well, about what? shit. <laughs> did, did you say hey to everybody? Oh, while you All were right. getting your coffee and winkling, I was on. Yeah. The, I was on the microphone, speed speed helloing to everybody in your You're stead. so awesome. Well, You're you so know, awesome. yeah, I had a hard time getting the show to off the tonight. I don't know what the hell. I was going to be late, and all of a sudden, everything worked. And then I wasn't late, and now I'm here. So, but uh, let me, okay, what do we call this? So I got to write some notes for Grim. So, uh, think logically. Think logically, okay. Is there a link to it, or is it just? Uh, actually, I do believe I have a link here yeah. if to the Ringing Cedars books where you can get the PDF downloads yeah. to the different books. Okay. All I'm saying is, if you put a link up for it, I'll post it in the notes. But you got to do it early because I'm smoking. Ah. If you wait too well, long, I promise I'm I'm like you know I'll promise you the moon and then forget I promised you the moon. Oh. But then I, I'll yeah, yeah. I'll remember I promised you something, but I won't remember what it was. So I'll like I'll bring in a tuna sandwich or I don't know maybe a cup of water something like that. Okay, well, looks like it only has a PDF version of book <laughs> one in English. But I will go ahead and post a link in the chat real quick because you can see all the different. Yeah, fun post stuff. it. I'll copy and paste it to the notes for our hardcore 20 out there in Radio Land. But uh, no. yeah. Anastasia is, has really. And, and I read some, mm -hmm. um, read some reviews on it when I was trying to find this link. Yeah. And one of the reviews said, it's a fantasy series based out of Russia. And I thought, oh, wow. that's how they're going to play this one. It's a fantasy yeah. series. Uh -huh. That's what Alrighty. they do. The history is fake. And the fake yeah. is history. And we're we're just sitting here sucking it up like a biscuit and gravy, baby. Yep. Well, in any case, in the book, Anastasia says, why don't you, she asks Vladimir to tell her, you know, how many hospitals and doctors and all of this other fun stuff that there are in the world? And he said, oh, there's hospitals in every town and there's doctors everywhere. And she said, now, has it always been this way? And he said, well, no, you know, it's just been in like the last couple hundred years that we've started getting more and more doctors and hospitals. And so she asked him, so um, are there a lot of diseases in the world? And he said, yes, there are a lot of diseases in the world, and that's why we have so many doctors and hospitals. And she said, has it always been this way? And he said, well, no, I don't believe it has. And she said, okay, so think logically. Think back. Hmm. Now, 
What did people do before there were all those doctors and hospitals? Uh, duh. Right. And when you when yeah. you see that light bulb come on, Mary, there's no turning back from that particular step. And just because people understand the step, that doesn't mean they take it. It's a real, True. Yeah. Like, you know, the difference between, uh, to be personal so you can compare, the difference between me and your mom, because there's so much input on your mom, and I make all my own decisions. Right, honey? That's right. She said yeah. no. Hey, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> I want to re- a- I want to recap. You make them show. all, and you make them all voluntarily because you know what's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That that's how it works. Well, okay, uh, so one of the questions yeah. that I oh, came yeah. up with after this interchange in the book was, so are there healing plants in the world? Yes. I think yes. we all know yes. And are there people that know how to use them? Double yes. Yeah. So if you answer yes to either of those, do you think that these are new things on the world? Oh, no, absolutely not. Older than Well, dirt. if not, because, you know, people have known about herbs and healing plants forever. Uh-oh. And so Vladimir is telling her all of this that, that you know well they've been around forever and that every every little community had at least one person that knew how to grow these plants when to pick them you know what time of day uh, where to go to get the best ones all this other fun stuff and they cured everything or they helped people heal themselves because there really is no such critter as a cure. You know, you just got to take in the proper nutrient, get the proper exercise and and the proper amount of sleep in order to to let your body heal itself. There's no curing anything. Can't even cure stupid. That's something someone has to take upon themselves. But, you know, you realize that all of these different communities had all of these people that were healers. And then Vladimir said, well, what about the Black Plague and all of this other fun stuff? And she said, look at the timing of the Black Plague. And that's where I stopped at in the book last night when I put it down and went, okay, I got to go to sleep. But um, when you look at the timing of when a lot of this stuff happened, it was around the same time as the Dark Ages. Around the same time as the Inquisitions, around the same time as the witch trials, around the same okay. time as, you know, and you start seeing that, wait a minute, those leeches that be have um, just pretty much decimated all of the communities of all of the people that not only knew how to use herbs, because they were pagans, they were heretics, we couldn't have that. And so then people had to go to someone to get treatment. Oh, and then the religiosity group also added to that when the plague kicked in, well, you know it's all your fault because you were listening to those pagans, and this is God's punishment on you. For listening to those pagans that happened to know how to cure you, how to fix you. But we took care of those bad people for you. So now you have to come us to us for spiritual cleansing. And then you can go to our approved healers exactly. to heal you. And it's, and it's all people buy and believe and pray to all this kind of nonsense. When you think it through in a clear state of mind, you find out that it doesn't really pan out but oddly enough you know what i titled the show before i ever talked to you tonight you want to hear the title i came up with sure bury the past and lie about the future yep and yep man i was listening to ucy uh, shally lama today he's got a real small audience like like me and you do when we do something together but you know i think that we're loyal to when you put something out we listen to it and some of the stuff that him and his partners come up with is crazy, and some of it not so crazy. Yeah. Well, part of it today that was I hearing that struck me was that the monetary system is set up specifically to do what it's doing. 
And oh yeah, these people. Yeah, well, I hear that kind of uh, reference when they're talking about certain things. So I wanted to pitch Shali Rama over at UCY dot com. I better put a dot in the notes instead of posting this show on my show. That's kind of overkill in notes. But I'm gonna do a little. If you're interested in what I may be chitter chattering about with no idea, try him out. Ride that boy. He likes the attention. Mm -hmm. He gets mm -hmm. together with Clint Richardson, or he did. You know, they don't do it so often now. It's kind of rare. But boy, these guys, the way they talk about the things they talk about, it's, it, it'll irritate me in one respect, and then in another, I, I get it. So it's real balanced. Yeah. See, and that's that's where I I was able to weave what I've been reading into Black's Law because I'm thinking, man, you had all of this, you know, and especially that 13th Amendment where you had no titles of nobility or any of that other fun stuff. What if back when, and I'm just supposing, I'm putting out suppositions, I have no factual knowledge of any of this stuff because I wasn't there to see it happen. So I'm just supposing, just in case, I had to put that disclaimer out there because I'm sure there's going to be someone that will go, oh, bullshit, Grammy, you don't know. Well, you're right. I don't know because I wasn't there to see it. But what if Black's Law all was part of that tangled web they wove way back when in the day in a way of controlling people? First, they controlled them with their religiosity, and then they brought in that other side of the sword, the legality bullshit of it with the Black's Law stuff. And, and it's also a way of them talking down to us and using coded language. Well, right, because in layman's terms, and they'll say that shit to you, then they're speaking a different language, which means some of the words have a different fucking definition. Yep. Yeah. And I can barely speak English, so I'm not going to learn any other languages. Thank you very much. Yeah, see, and my brother... One of the things that he got on me about while we were talking, because he's driving on his way to see mom, and it's like a six-hour drive from where he lives. And um, so he wanted to jibber-jabber, so oh, okay. But um, he said that I really need to stop playing with the language, because the English language is the English language. And I said, the English language. <laughs> Very good for spell casting. Mm -hmm. And I said, you really need to stop and realize inside every belief there is a lie hidden in plain sight. And he said, not well, every belief. And I said, no, seriously. Well, if you believe it, doesn't you matter, don't know it. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. You can prove it to somebody else. In, in less than five seconds, all you have to do is call them a stupid motherfucker. And believe me, they will get hot and angry. And the point I'm using that for is because that's what they're supposed to do when you say those words. See, they work. Oh, and, yeah. And we all have the ability to shrug it off and not pay no attention to it and give it any fuel. But usually when it's used out loud or dependent on the circumstances. So I'm starting to look at that. Hey, yeah, we are, we are emoting these vibrations that we don't recognize them because we don't know what the fuck they mean. But we know how to get mad because somebody said something that pissed us off. But that's not really what the fucking problem is. That's the representation no. of something else. But yeah, that's our interpretation. And that's, that's right what up. I was trying to get across to him because he said this his story stuff and this beliving stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, seriously, mm -hmm. David, you need to stop and think about this. Someone tells a story and it becomes accepted and it becomes history mm -hmm. down the road. Exactly. Whether it's true or not, it's still his story that they dropped that second S in it. Mm. That's all there is to it. Oh, that's not. And I, okay, whatever. Well, I think these you things be keep live us live. What they, you wish to be live. Yeah, but they keep us off balance so we can argue. True. Well, and he's he's very he, bless his heart. And this is his his path. He can keep going down it. I'm not going with him. But he really believes that the Bible is the answer to everything. There you go. 
That's his decision to make as it see that's the, the beauty of being a free individual is uh, I've grown beyond laughing at the ridiculousness that I think religion is, right? So yep. when other people uh, Vinny, when other people have a hold on the religious thing, the Bible, whatever you call that, I don't tell them not to. I don't laugh at them. I don't make jokes about it. I Try to question it from a from my perspective, which in theirs may not be as it could be as ridiculous as theirs is to me. See? So we're we're hmm, we're all looking to agree instead of just doing thinking things and letting that be. We're we're taught to engage each other in our particular beliefs, and when we don't agree, then you yell at each other about it so you can fix it. Yeah, <laughs> and fix that other person because by golly, they need to be fixed. <laughs> Got a baseball bat? I'll fix. Yeah. I'll fix your problem for nineteen ninety five, baby. Come here. Anyway. Yeah, but well, I call and it, that's like I told him that you know I don't want a representative in Congress because I don't want someone representing me. Right. I will present right. myself. No, yeah. Well. It, and then way to take this all off a completely different topic in a way is that's a contract that you are not a party of, to or out, you know, party to. You didn't sign anything. And when you did sign shit, you were lied to about what you were signing, why you were signing. If you had the, a, a true contract in front of you, we wouldn't be where we are now. All this shit's been hijacked by thieves. Mm -hmm. And if you understand the law, the law is written to protect the criminal in the white shirt. Oh, yeah. And just punish the fuck out of some idiot that had a pound of weed. He thought he might be able to make a few dollars on it. Now, you know, some states will give you 10 years for that shit. Yeah, well, still, it's, it's there to protect still. the nobility or those with titles of nobility. Going back to the... 13th Amendment that somebody see here's here we go with the internet this is where you got to you got to expect opposition right you can mm -hmm. do so many incredible things with a computer that it makes the onlooker think of it's a fraud quickly instead of if they had a piece of paper they wouldn't know a real fucking this from a real fake fucking this in their hands but they think they yeah. do yeah but they think they do they're all mm -hmm. brilliant they no counterfeit money and all kinds of crap. So they got us all trained to behave this way. And now with the internet, you can make things up that pretty close to the truth. But how true are they? And in yeah. the end, you're you're stuck back in that loop of government. So the only answer to this for me was to just, it's all corrupt. It's all bullshit. Fuck it all. Tolerate it while it's there, but don't. Don't engage the beast. The beast will gobble you up. Yeah. Hey, they killed Epstein or whatever, disappeared, and whatever the fuck they did to that guy, and he was in prison in America under 24-hour surveillance, and he's gone. <laughs> he's gone, but is he dead? No, that's not the point. That The point isn't whether he's alive or dead. The point is, boom... This man is in freaking custody by the biggest authority on the fucking planet, and they can't keep track of him. So they say. No. Mary, well, so that's what a lack of fucking film proving he was there is. They yeah. fucked up. That Somebody fucked up. What do you call it? Oh, yeah. Who cares how that fuck up happened? Oh, he was paid off. Oh, they snuck in another person. Fuck all that shit, period. It's, there's no excuse for any of it. Or all this damn Nazi fucking spying they do on us wouldn't exist at all. It's a, it's a crock. We're being threatened with things that are partially true, like the NSA, uh, the FBI, and the CIA. These things are real, but we're not big enough players for them to you know, spend money to fight us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still got to justify spending a million of dollars to move some group of CIA guys around. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
You don't think they stay at the Motel 6 and eat a McDonald's in the Waffle House, do you? Do what now? These people that work for the fucking government, you don't think they eat at Waffle House and sleep at Motel 6, do you? Some probably do. I don't. Why? Why? If they are, it's because they're snooping on something. Now, come on. Even even a dog knows not to lick itself in under certain circumstances. No, it doesn't. Never mind. Oh, you, you got you ready for a giggle? Sure. I, I was listening to something about uh, the animal world, and this woman was pissed off because uh, sea otters rape some, like, uh, I don't know, what was it? Do you remember what that was? Sea otters rape beavers or something, some other animal, right, in the, in the animal kingdom. And the reason that came back all fucked up was my dog was trying to mount my cat on the porch earlier tonight. And it was the funniest damn thing I'd seen in a long time. So we got a female dog trying to mount a, a male cat. And he's just standing, he's sitting there taking it. <laughs> it was her turn on top. <laughs> I, I, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah. But lately, and then it goes back to I'm pushing Sholly's show because these guys talk about these things where nature and science and, and politics and religion, all these things have been misrepresented to us in ways that we're, we're not collectively in tune with. We, some people believe this, some people believe that. That's the whole point. Keep us split up, chasing bullshit from different angles. It ain't true. And never go, keep them away from the fucking light. <laughs> oh yeah, and they're constantly, excuse me, constantly beliving things as opposed to actually going out there and knowing things. Well, we got sold that the future was better than the past, and I think from the standpoint it got today, whatever these old past things are that were so fucking horrible that they're so they were so bad they're illegal today. And people are trying to overturn this stuff because they were lying. And nobody will come out and say that out, out loud. You know, we got lied to for 80 fucking years. And people's lives were just crushed, destroyed over a plant. Made illegal by greedy freaking people that knew people in a church. Because that's how that started. The Mormon church got into the government and said, we want this made illegal by God and country. And I don't know how much land they've got invested into synthetics to uh, compete with weed, hemp, cannabis. See? So, they do own an awful lot of ground. Right. But I'm saying is all these synthetics were already there too, Right. So why not use the one that's going to make the most profit? This is how businesses have evolved over you know, the time we've been around. The cheapest possible fucking way to put some piece of shit out there that everybody will buy and it'll break down in two months and have to get another one because the first one can't be repaired because it costs more to fix than it does to replace. <laughs> and that's how it is. Yeah, well, it's planned obsolescence. Hey, Tesla wanted to give us electricity. Well, Westinghouse wanted to sell it to us. You know, different uh, conflict of interest going on there. Or Edison, take a choice. But, oh, man, all these things in life that we're so convinced of that are so fucking important, they're really not. <laughs> they're so far from important. But they get our attention, and the way we say the words about all this crap makes us all behave a certain way. Whatever that certain way is, your reaction to words that you hear is behavior. That's the whole point. And pro- yeah, programming and behavior. Yeah. Yeah. So I can piss off little Miss Mary by saying a certain sentence in a certain way, at a certain volume, or with a certain pitch. I can get a result. Right. We can agree without having to prove that. Right. I already made the point earlier. But you know, say the right thing at the wrong time to the wrong person. And they, they fall apart. And you might have just been talking at the fucking top of your head, not thinking twice about what you were saying. And the other person goes, how could you say that to me? Say what? The fuck did I say this? time?" 
and I'm usually the the talker. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah. Yeah. It. You. You can control what you say and possibly how you say it when you're thinking about it, <laughs> but you can't control how someone else interprets it, no matter no. how. No. No. It's trauma or drama, baby. That's just the way it is. But the the return to Black's Law thing, okay? That see that opens up these floodgates in my head. You know, I don't know if I'm a a simple thinker or a complex thinker, whatever the fuck difference there may be in that one. But some ideas make me think of more shit, and some ideas stop me. I'm done. I thought about okay, there's the answer. And this yeah. Black's Law thing made me go a step further to, wow, they had to translate Black's Law from, what, Hebrew or Latin, which are Latin, into Dog Latin. So, one more time, somehow I just feel cheated on, on the translation part. Well, and that's where that movie Lost in Translation, although I've never seen it. Yeah. I'm not really interested in seeing it. Mm -hmm. And yet the title, man, Lost well, in Translation, but Mary, is how much has been lost in translation? I live with Cirque. I've lived with Cirque yeah. for almost six fucking years. And still, Danglish is different than English. The way she hears it and the way she speaks it. There, there are things that I can say in English to her that she thinks that, that's some kind of insult or something. And to me, it's not anything. But the way she hears it, because of her understanding of language. See, everybody mm -hmm. dick gets a different dictation. It's very complicated. You know, it's not that one size fits all thing. You know, where, well, 90 people are going to say, hey, that's okay. And then 10 are going to complain, that this isn't right. And who's going to listen to 10 people out of 100? The, the, the Democrats. <laughs> That was a joke. Ah. You know, because the Democrats don't listen either. No. That's just a no. story they tell. You know, But I do have something I, I want your uh, your take on. As a farmer, okay. Brown, you've been in the farmer business now for a bit, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, but you came out of the man-made business. Now, I remember when you were working for the car dealership. And you were there for a bit, so you learned a lot of things. Now, uh -huh. I want to say this. Man-made equals waste for profit. Tell me where yes. I tell me where I'm wrong on that one. You're not. <laughs> You're not. But you need to add to it. It's waste for profit, and it's your fault for being so wasteful. Well, that's an accusation. Because you are demanding mm -hmm. the profit, or you are demanding the product. Mm-hmm. Now, that demand for the product was created inside your mind, but it was done so that they can, you know, they, they create this product that is wasteful, and then they sell it to you and make a profit off of it. And then when it actually becomes wasteful to not only them, but to you as well, then you get blamed for purchasing the product that was wasteful in the first place because, well, you demanded it. It's it's the way it, there's another plausible deniability kind wow, of thing. that one, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Kind of, that's hmm. your exit for everything. Don't play me. Take the girl. I'm innocent. It was all her idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and there there's another thing I got big dis dis uh, disagreement with women about is this uh, gender split fight. You know, it's uh, well, right, yeah. right, 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 right. But different, different ideas about it, and the way different guys usually speak about it will piss women off. Where it won't piss me off because I know what the fuck he's saying in my language, you know. But the girl listening, she's gonna hear it her way. And it, you get where I'm going or not? And yet, not all girls hear it. Oh, that exactly. Way. I, I'm just, I'm just saying that. There's differences in the, in the audible, you know, how we take in that audible. Two different people sitting next to each other. Same damn story, two different things. And, yeah. I, and I'm just using... Well, 
I'm using the yeah. female thing to say, well, I, in my day, when I look back in history, right, how I grew up and how my life has gone, I've seen how women had it freaking made until I was about 20. And then I started to see how it mm, kind of disintegrated over the last 30 odd years, 40 years. And that's my opinion as guy looking onto it. But most of the females that you hear the hoopla from, I don't know where any of them are. I just see links on the internet. But wow, what a different world. And you grew up in that world I came out of. We were the same age. So yeah. California, Kansas. I'm not talking about that, you know, fast talking bullshit. I'm talking about that. Growing up in that time period where things were so... Uh, the mindset was different. It was slower. We weren't vibrating on this frequency. Mm, I think the collective mindset was was in... Well, it's always in transition, but it was, it was in a kind of a slow, slow mode at that time. Um, oh. Oh, Grim thinks I wanted to change times. No, I just made a mistake. I thought it was 8 o'clock. It's 9. It was... Uh, sir asked me to change. Not, and I, I don't know. I have trouble following fucking directions. <laughs> I thought it was... Why am I not surprised by that? I know. Huh? You'd think I'd learn after all these years. Uh, well, you know, some of us are slow learners. Some of us have to repeat a lesson multiple times. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Like we've done this show a couple of times. Yeah. But there's uh, there's always a little twist. There's a new, like all the new things going on. Like, hey, a new war with Iran. Ooh. Mr. Trump yeah. blowing his freaking tuba off out there in the real world with all these threats to the Iranians. Ooh. Yeah, my brother asked me about that, too, and I said, you know, that's not exactly the way I wanted to start off 2020, with the same shit, different day. Yeah, see, the coincidence of, oh, the Iranians invaded the American embassy, just like they did, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, all these things have happened in the last few days, right? But yeah. in real time, if you look at the things they're claiming, they take months in planning and paperwork, and you can't get the military to do anything together in a, in a reasonable amount of time because it's too big. It's too hard to manage. Yeah. So, no. Mm. It's like yeah. trying to stop a train when someone is stuck on the tracks. Mm. You know, it, it, well, I guess it, it, it takes would, over a mile to stop a train. What, what society makes us think others are capable of, to me, seems like being able to tell somebody what the 58th word of the Constitution is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, number 58, oh, that's the, and be correct, yeah. because they know, because that, no, that's number 58. The fuck, no, the fuck, that's another book. <laughs> never mind. But, never mind. Well, there's supposed to be people that have eidetic memory, okay, right. You know how unimportant that would truly be, how useless in reality, all you would do is make other people either jealous of your uh, ability or want to show you off like a pet llama, you know, at a cocker spaniel thing. Hey, I got a llama, baby. Look at this. Yeah, yeah I know y'all got cocker spaniels, but I got a llama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. I don't know. The dog and pony show mentality in me, I just think it uh, it just got eroded over the years. You know, by the quality of, of entertainment sucking so bad now compared to how it started when I was a kid. You know? I come up with, you know, all this great stuff. And here I am at 60 and they've got the worst crap you can fucking think of popular on TV. You know, the Netflix thing or YouTube, whatever it is. Yeah. And you know you're you were talking about all the how bad it was back in the old days. No, no, no. How, I don't no, think no, so. No. no, that's been and, that. and how hard things were back in the old days and how they didn't have this and they didn't have that. And my brain instantly went to and they were freaking badasses to be able to live through that shit and look at the panty waists we got now. Oh, okay. That's where my brain went I, I when thought, you Okay. I thought you were 
accusing me of the wrong, you know. No, no. I think it's all relative to the time that you're born in because there are people that complain about shit now and everything's automatic. It takes too long to get this movie downloaded. Oh, what am I going to do? I need to have 5G. I don't care that it microwaves my brain. I, I need it because that. that movie will now download mm -hmm. in the blink of an eye. No, uh, it's not in the blink of an eye. That's how much the speed will increase. Yeah, and but wow. What a what a hopeless group we are. We are a collective of disappointment, tragedy. Well, and it that is part of the whole vaccine coming into play bullshit. You know, oh, with, crying with out the loud. Then adjuvants that, and all yeah. that fun stuff. You yeah. dumb people down and then you lead them by their nose ring that you talked them into getting, which, you, wow, that just popped into my head. All these people that have nose rings mm. and they're getting led around by them. Mm. But, you know, you, you dumb them down and you lead them by the nose ring and then you poke them in the ass with a hot cattle prod mm. and wait for the reaction to start the chain reaction. Some people and, call that foreplay. Well, some people do, but, you know, this is not Fifty Shades of Flash. So <laughs> I didn't say me. <laughs> oh, you dirty girl. <laughs> I think I think Circle's the one that has the um, uh, cattle Cirque, prod. Circle picked up a little bit of a cold. She's not feeling so hot today. Ah. Man, she sounds, uh, her voice, she sounds like a cross between Grimm and Moose Girl. <laughs> Oh, my. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you got a big fuck off. <laughs> well, there you go. I told you. Ah, she always tells me. So what? Uh, told her, if it's really important, cut your finger and write it on the wall of blood. Ooh. That way I can't not Help read it. Help me. Oh, are you, well, yeah. Can you imagine living as a lunatic that would do that? Hey, why'd oh, you Lord. cut your finger right fuck off on the wall? Well, because my wife told me to. Well, you're kind of stupid there, aren't you, sport? And <laughs> that's what I would think. <laughs> Come on. Vaccines at work. Oh. How many times have you had wow. a shot? Well, there's got to be. I, I Let me change shift gears one more time. You know, you know what? I was, I was reminiscing about something from my younger days when I was growing up in the Dirty streets of Los Angeles, California. And you know what that thing was? We had an abundance of, in my day, growing up, that they don't have anymore. What's that? Dangerous serial killers. Oh, we had our Charlie Manson. We had our Wayne Gacy's. We had our, uh, oh, we had our, uh, hmm, the Hillside Strangler. We had. You know, we had a variety. We had women doing it too. What was her name? <laughs> in Florida, this is a girl. <laughs> she uh. was killed. She's a prostitute murderer. Okay. Anyway, what 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 I noticed just the other day for some reason, I have no idea why, but I picked up on. You know what's missing? We don't what? hear about psychotic serial killers out there on the loose, out in the world, killing strangers anymore. It lasted That's about. They're all in Congress. It la yeah, but it lasted about twenty five years, and then it just kind of fizzled. It went. Yeah, because they all ran. It, they all got into politics. Ah, oh, that's well. That's and now they're bombing other people and well, getting their jollies. I. Mm, uh, I know. <laughs> I'm making, and yet. I'm I know, not. but the, the way that, that, like the information circus that we've been given. We, turns this back to us is the FBI estimates there's 130 active serial killers out there killing people every day. Okay, well what? Are you out of your fucking mind? You know what the numbers would be? See, they lie to us about everything. 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 130 serial killer killers out there killing every day? That's what I, they claim. There's active 130. I read it. Uh, who'd see? There, what's the source of the written information? I don't know. Maybe it was a prank. Gee, don't pick on me. You know, it'd be all like technical and stuff. No, I'm just. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm trying to break yeah. this down into the, yeah, the Zodiac capita kind of thing. Although it sucks that they're out there killing people, but 
once again. Mm -hmm. How many people are in Congress? Oh, right, right. I mean, well, wait, wait, wait. Still, in my day, when I was growing up, this was newsworthy, and presidents fucking had opinions about Charlie Manson was guilty, and here we are, and, and you've got special task forces, and, and you've got Trump in the White House, not one fucking serial killer running around going, "I'm killing for Trump, catch me, motherfucker, catch me." You know, it's like. Why not? No, instead you've got these morons out there that are going, I'm going to burn myself up because Trump <laughs> is the president. Oh, that's going to make everything a whole lot better. People like that never follow through. The one that will do it won't warn you. They'll just sit down and set their self on fire. Actually, there have been some that have warned and then done that. And it's like, well... Darwin just awarded someone else one of those <laughs> shiny little trophies. Uh, well, maybe if they did go through that, they just didn't get stopped in time. But uh. see, I just I think it's so sad when people do that kind of stuff. You Why? Know, like I'm it's entertaining. Going to emas well, you know, like the ones that say I'm going to emasculate myself because of white male whatever, <laughs> whatever, and so I'm going to oh, cut God. off my junk. Well. Alrighty then. Well, the way at I, least yeah. you won't sully the gene pool anymore. Uh, the gene pool's fucked with by the hospitals and shit. Well, the gene pool has been sullied, but you know that's one less sullying, and I'm not talking about sully from the X Files either. There's nowhere to run. It's too late. We're we're it's over. We might as well just give up. Uh, I'm not <sighs> that. Call the Rothschilds and tell them they can have it. <laughs> oh, Grimmy said, don't forget about the Zodiac guy. No, I, I know Zodiac. There was so many. Son of Sam. Um, yeah. Hill Stride His Stranglers. neighbor's dog told him to kill people. There was Bob. <laughs> My favorite, it, but the thing that I, that, that I brought this up about is the older I get, and the more of this crap that I see on, you know, like uh, documentaries made for TV, blah, 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 watch this. The more to think I'm being led down a road that's maybe half true and maybe not. You know, and because if you think about, think this through, these people claim to solve murder. Okay. If you look at the results of prison, you'll find like 30% of people on death row weren't guilty of anything except bad police reports. Yeah. So, now, that starts me to thinking, oh, wait a minute. So, did the cops just get caught because they lie about every fucking thing they do? Or were these three out of however many people saps? How, how do you really explain all that? Well, that's another one of those one-size-fits-all kind of things. You can't, you can't do it. Because I think each case is a little bit different. Some of it's dirty cops. Some of it's idiots. Mm -hmm. Some of it. Hey, easy. There's probably as many excuses as there are people that are in there. Mm. Well, then it's everybody then, huh? Well. It's I've, everybody or it's nobody. It can't be. I've tried to work this out with my master brain calculator. And I'm telling you, I can't come up with a way to take all the responsibility of every fucking thing in life as my own or be a part of everything's gone wrong. I'm a part of it is where I can get to, but I can't get to. Oh, it's all me. Look at I'm the center of the fucking universe. Dig me. I'm cool. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the other day I'm like, what? No, I was just I I was just thinking that you know, mm. is it a one, is it an all or none, or is it okay? I can't be responsible for y'all, so I'll just be responsible for me. It's up to the individual, isn't it? See, there's no honest way to interpret the information because we get such fucked up stories about the information to make a decision in the first place. Yeah. It's like convincing somebody, you know, which the 53rd word of the Constitution is from memory. I mean, you know, what? Everybody that can do something spectacular like that's usually a fraudster. Yeah. 
Yeah. What what was that? The the um oh, I don't remember what the name of the show was, but I watched it on Netflix. <laughs> hmm. well, what um, was it about? Well, it was this guy that could, you know, he could solve all these murders and all this other fun stuff and and everybody said you must be psychic and he said, "No, it's all just a parlor trick." And basically it is. It's learning to read body language and learning to take, you know, scan your surroundings and absorb everything in and then to put it together in a logical prove- uh, procession so mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, maybe where dumbing down doesn't work, what you're talking about right now strikes me as like uh, int- uh, 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 indoctrination. Whew, lost the word completely. But. You know that, that head pounding shit that they did to us? Believe, believe, believe until you go, shut, fuck, I'll believe it if you'll shut the fuck up for 10 minutes. And then, yeah. yeah. And then after that, you know, it was like being branded. Even if you didn't know you were there, you are there. Yeah. yeah. It took me 12 years of, I consider 16 to 28, my formative years were. I started out as my goal was to do this and... At the end of that 12 years, I'd abandoned that shit and decided I wanted to do whatever instead. There was no, there was no definite, I'm going to do this. It was, we'll see what happens. But it took 12 years to get to that point from 16. You know, and everybody, I think, does it in their own time frame. Some people never do. My father never did. My father did uh, the responsible guy life, you know. Yeah. Well, hmm. he didn't. Well, he didn't uh, have a, an academic background, so he didn't feel, and he wasn't very clever as far as like the way they they taught me how to be creative ways to make money. You mm-hmm. can make money doing things you like if you you know know how to sell it. But most folks, uh, they're, I don't know, I guess they're just, they're raised in doubt, self-doubt, and I can't do that. And I wasn't raised with that. I was raised with, you better fucking do it. I'll whip your ass if you don't do that. See, and I think that's part of the indoctrination. It's the subtle or subliminal, um, you can't do that kind of thing. And, you know, instead of uh, showing kids, not teaching them, but showing kids how to think and how to find their passion and how to find what they, you know, even if it's just something that they enjoy doing and they're very good at, you know, instead of showing kids the process of how each person comes to that in their own way and find it for themselves, they're teaching them, you must think this way, you must regurgitate, memorize and regurgitate, memorize and regurgitate. And if you don't regurgitate properly in the correct order, then you are a bad student. So it's it's one of the it's it's like a soft bully tactic. I guess is the yeah. way I see it. Because yeah. now the school systems, I think that's really what they do. It doesn't yeah. make a damn bit of difference how smart you are. They have that sm- that soft bully tactic where if if you don't comply, yeah. if you don't go along with how they do things, then you will be labeled as this other thing that is not socially acceptable. It's I don't know. It's like I tell you what, and what just popped into my head, my young my oldest daughter well, actually both of my girls are very, very smart. Very smart. They're they excel in different areas, but they're both really sharp. Everybody says that. Yeah, but my oldest daughter <laughs> I'm just was really good with the academic stuff, yeah. like very quick, caught on quickly. And <laughs> I mean, that child, seriously, and I didn't realize this until she graduated college. I just hadn't made the connection just because it, it was just like normal. This was normal for her. She went from kindergarten all the way through college, straight A. So very smart kid, and and she's got a business degree, and she's in account in accounting and all that other. So she's and she's very good with numbers, but but no, she got okay. when she well when she was like in second grade, hmm. they said she tests out of a lot of this stuff, which she did. Hmm. You know, she was in the like the top ninety eighth percentile or whatever. 
um, or how do they put that? Smarter than 98% of her other peers. Hmm. In any case, so they wanted to put her in this gifted class. Mm -hmm. And I went, okay, so what will they do? Mm -hmm. Well, they will be doing accelerated learning (laughs) and, and be able to learn different things than what their counterparts are doing in the regular classroom. And I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll give it a try. And after the first couple of weeks, she said, Mom, I don't want to be in gifted class anymore. And I said, why? And she said, because we go in there and we take all of our books in there and we have our homework that we have to do from our regular classes because we have to keep up with those as well. But while we're in there, we're supposed to lay our heads down on our desk and listen to classical music. That's what gifted class was <laughs> in in this school district out here. And mm-hmm. I went, really? Well, yeah. Seriously? Mary, That's what... Mary, Mary, let me, let me cure you of the school shit. The gifted class was the way you sort out the ones that aren't tameable. It's how you sort out the ones that bust the curb. Yeah, the ones, the, the ones that will not conform, those are the ones that are the gifted ones. Yeah. Period. Well, I pulled her out of the gifted class because I said, this is bullshit. Well, there, there you go. But they're trying to calm you down and keep you all subdued and all that shit. Yeah. yeah. I want to be wild. Do fun stuff. Make things. I don't know. It's crazy. She also wanted to play football in high school. And actually, one of the coaches thought she would be very good at playing football in high school, but none of the boys wanted her to play football in high school because they knew she could tackle their asses. So, eh. No comment. Hey, <laughs> when did servitude become freedom? Do you remember the day? Does it, Is there a, a national became servitude became freedom day? Oh, they don't word it like that. Sure they do. I just did. No. When no, did servitude day. become freedom, people? <laughs> We know what I'm talking about. It's not yes, like I'm making anything up. I'm not poking at anybody because I'm in it too. I'm just in it at different than most folk. It's the same fucking thing. It doesn't change. It's when they made our cages more comfortable. Well, the one that I, my experience through my, my journey has shown me that the guy that doesn't want to say that out loud is usually the one that feels the most restricted. You know, and the people that can joke about, yeah, my prison, eh, I painted it black and white. Yeah. People that can joke about it, make uh, comments about it, not be a victim of it. You get it? Because it's real, but it ain't real. See? You make your own freaking decisions in this lifetime. It's so damn hard to put words to to tell somebody else. When things look a certain way... I'm the one thinking them. So guess what? It's not you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all there do. You go. We all basically create our own reality. Right. And then when you start digging into how that breaks down, the definitions of what your brain does so that you can see a TV set and all the shit that goes through from the blink to the brain to the see it. And it's so quick. You, there's not even a way to gauge it so fast. Boom. Before that, it's already done. Right? So, mm-hmm. but we take these things like, oh, everybody does that. No, everybody doesn't. Everybody does a version of it. You know, because I think we, we're we vibrating or responding to vibrations on different frequencies depending on the individual. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, a lot of people have a t- – well, okay, I better not say a lot of – I know mm. a lot of people personally, mm. yeah. and I know myself included for quite some time, and I'm still fighting this little habitual addiction thought process thing that, you know, if if I think of something a certain way or if I have a certain attitude towards something or if I interpret something a certain way – then other people should be able to do that as well. And it took me quite a while to realize that just because I think it doesn't mean that that's the way it works with everybody else. So That's what everybody seems to think. That's like a standard. See, they give us these 
these basic standards that don't work. Instead of whatever the truth is, and this is my argument, you, you know how I am about this particular, but if we were always uh, mentally aware of what truth truly was, what something is or is not, Instead of all this make-believe lie, believe us, we won't fucking crap that we do with, you know, we deal with. Vote for me, I'll, I'll give you a pony. You know, vote for me, I'll raise your taxes. Vote for me, I'll I don't, butt rape your chicken. You know, whatever. It I is. don't want a pony. I can't housebreak a pony. Yeah, but there's somebody out there that would. They go, yeah, I'll vote for you if you give me a pony. Yeah, those Obama phones. Yeah. So is that just because you think it? Yeah, that's what you said. That's what I'm going to call that blurb. Just because you think it. Yeah. And well, yeah, but see, not to the person that thinks it. That's the part that's so individual that you can't share it with anyone. My version of this world is nowhere near Cirque's. Cirque sees the world one way. I see the world a completely. Then there's this joint reality thing that we have our opinions about. That shit we agree on. The superficial shit that doesn't, you know, that usually will break up a marriage. You know, like, who owns the house? Well, the bank. What? <laughs> <laughs> I got the deed. See my name right here on the deed. See, see, look, 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 look. See where it says tenant? <laughs> Dumbass. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Nope. And things like this, when people have to face the uh, accuser, because this is what you come out of it looking like. Like you're accusing your partner of being a complete dumbass that doesn't know how to read a freaking document. (laughs) And they take things like that kind of serious. Yeah, they do. And you don't have to say it rudely to get that result from doing it. Ah, life is funny. Well, no, we've been pitted to these last 40 years of women's rights. See, all that equality shit. See, that you would fight to be just as fucked up as men are when you weren't in the first place. Well, you are now. <laughs> oh, boy. You got some doozers out there, let me tell you. <laughs> they even got guys dressed up like girls doing sports. Did you know that? Huh? 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 No, yeah, I didn't. They, they got kids out there identifying as girls, right? And then yeah. going in there wiping out the whole wrestling team by themselves because they're guys. Mm-hmm. Well, see, the gender split physically still fucking exists. There's just some things fem- females were not designed to do. But some women don't believe that, so... Now we got a disagreement with this crap that doesn't fucking matter. And to add and to add insult to injury, now you got guys telling their girls going in there fucking up all the girls. Wait a minute. Huh? <laughs> I don't get it. You know, if if it's okay for the guy to be call himself a girl and go in there and beat the girl, why is it any different than if he just went in there and beat the girl as a guy? See, and that's that's my thing. You know, if they're doing this whole crap of, well, I identify as a girl, so I should be able to compete against us. Well, I identify as a boy, so I should be. How many women actually identify as a guy so that they can compete against other guys, Olympic swimmers or mm-hmm. runners or mm-hmm. what have you? I don't see that happening nearly as often as the guys identifying as girls right. so that they can compete against the girls. And I think the re- part of the reason why they can they win against the girls is because they, they only identify the as no. a girl. They haven't removed their gear shift and ball bearings yet. No. They but suck as guys. As men, they suck. So they decide to be girls so they yeah. can win. Cause can't well, they compete. went somewhere so they can win. That, that's what I meant. How I well, probably didn't translate so good there. Thanks, man. man. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Good talk about I'm a loser about. when I lose her against these people, but <laughs> against you, now that I identify as you, wow. I'm a winner. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> yeah. Why not just make it just, <clears throat> you have a race, and you have guys and girls, and they're out there racing. 
and well, I can, first, second, and third, and I, just call it good. I can explain. Instead of doing this, I identify. Well, I, can, I identify as a pair of track shoes. I can explain it to you. Okay. I used to swim competitively. Okay. Uh-huh. And the reason that competitive anything such as that is bad, when it's done wrong, they put you in categories according to things that aren't balanced, like age. Instead of a height and weight class, so you compete against your own, your own equals. Yeah. They got you out there, you know, five foot tall, but you're swimming against a guy that's six foot tall. Who do yeah. you think's going to fucking win that race? Guy with the longer leg yeah, and the better stroke. See, and that's what I mean is, how is this competitive when there's obviously a conflict of interest here going on? You know, if you wouldn't bet on that because you'd be stupid. Not bet on the little guy to win. You, cl- you hear the click of that shotgun, maybe, but mm-hmm. that little guy is not because physically there's no way to do it, right? But we're yeah. we're raised with these illusions about how age makes you equal to everybody else that's your age when that's not true at all. In some areas, no. your age, your peers. In some areas, your light years different. And yet size is not really a good way of of doing it either because um, out here we have wrestling and, and Farmer's grandson is eight, yeah, eight years old, and he's in little kids wrestling. Now, this is his first year, and so, you know, um, age-wise, you know, he's kind of older for a lot of the kids that have started doing this That's for a while. what I was just talking and, about. And but then when you do the weight thing, you know, as in sizes and stuff, well, okay, he's the same weight and the same size as this other kid here. But once again, this is his first year, so he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the moves down, all this other fun okay. shit. Well, my point was kid. they use the wrong value systems in competitions of this nature. That's the well, whole premise I'm standing on it. There's no such thing as a fucking peer. I mean, but the way it's done is so obviously tilted one side against the other. I mean, it's not a level playing field from my perspective. Maybe you see it differently because of your history. See, and I think it should all be playing and not competition. Oh, yeah. You know, this whole, how are this you whole gonna striving get, for your trophy. Yeah, how are you going to get capitalists? If you don't do that, how do you think they got these communist kids? They stopped competing at school. That's what all that was about. Everybody gets a trophy. And instead of those guys suck, they came in second, which is what we used to do. Now it's everybody gets a trophy because everybody's so beautiful and wonderful. And they beat the fucking. And we used to play because we like to play. Well, we used to play because we like to win. I was a competitive swimmer. What can I say? I remember it. I mean, it's not like uh, it matters or it meant anything, but I did it. You know? So I know from experience that that freaking magnet is very strong, Miss Mary. Yeah, and that competitive magnet has been indoctrinated into us. Well, right. Uh, that You know, that uh, you got to, however many people there were at these swim meets, they were pretty good sized crowds. And when you want to fucking swim meet, you know, swim race and in the meet, you come out of the wind, people are clapping and slapping you on the back. You know. It's that it's like a like a drug, I think. It's that, the equivalent, something like that. You can do it once, you want to do it every fucking time. Well, yeah, it releases endorphins. Yeah, it's... but you know how hard it is to competitively always freaking win in anything. You know, you're going to have Days where you're going to be a second behind. Days you'll be a second ahead. And that, in that swimming world, that second is everything. <laughs> you can't just See, toss I, a coin. I just remember my mom, you know, because I remember one of the times when a, a brother came home and we lost. And mm. she said, well, did you have fun? Mm. Oh, well, I didn't yeah, grow up in any of that. Yeah, but we lost. And yeah. she said, did you play fair? Did you, you know, do everything the way you're supposed to do? As in, you know, you didn't didn't run anybody over, nobody got hurt, all that other fun stuff. Well, yeah. 
and you had fun. Yeah, but we lost. And she said, well, winning and losing isn't everything. Do you have a good time? If nobody gets hurt, if you want to go back, because you could win today and lose tomorrow and then win the next day. So why not just go out there and enjoy the experience and have a good time of playing a game that happens to have rules? Yeah, you score points. But uh, see, and that that's probably where a lot of people think I'm weird. Because, yeah, it is fun to win, but... You also got to learn to be a good loser. You got to you got to be a good sport at it, and that basically takes learning how to enjoy what you're doing. If you're not having fun playing a game, then why are you playing a game? You're not playing, are you? So that's that's my mindset on that. Is I I don't see why why you would do things like that, especially strenuous activity, if you're not enjoying yourself. See how You're... fucked up you are, little missy. I you know. Don't see? I know. What? What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, I really don't. I mean, you and yeah, your I'll weird go... outlook on this world. But I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. And there you want to get times. along with I'll everybody? Know. What's wrong with you? No, I war, don't want to get along war, with War, 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 war. Come on. No, there are times when I'll go, ha ha ha! I filled my whatever faster than you did and then the next thing you know they filled faster than i did and then it's like well okay let's go you're taking all the fun out of it then Uh, Uh, i know i am weird i understand that i have been told i am weird ah that's because you don't live in an overcrowded city where you have to conform and do what you're told there's (sighs) a reason i don't live there yeah exactly well most of the folk on the, uh, let's take a moment to uh, say hey to our friends. Uh, most of the folk on the reallibertymedia.com have that mentality about them. And I would say the, the most of them don't live in an overcrowded situation where they can't breathe. Yeah. The most. Not everybody. Yeah. But, uh, me and Sirk, when we were first together, I was too stifling for me. And I went, oh, ha! Ah! See? But, I had to do it to find out how I felt about it. And I didn't say, hey, I'm not going to like this, <laughs> which Jews usually do. They warn you. <laughs> I'm the yeah. Jew that doesn't give you no fucking warning. I just say, hey, I'm done. I don't like this. And there you go. Yeah. Well. But hey, don't you wish my country was like that? My Israeli brothers and sisters out there in Israel world. Ah. You know why I say that? Why is that? Because half the fucking Senate has uh, got a citizenship, a dual citizenship. And they're Israel and American. Fuck them. Yeah. You pick a side, well, bitch. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I can't do that. I If I could do that, I'd do it. I can't do it. So you know what? I'm jealous. <laughs> they won't let me do it, Miss Mary. They won't let me break the law, but they got a license to break the law. I want a license to break the law. See, and I don't even ha- want to have one citizenship. Oh. Let well, alone dual. Well, it doesn't matter what you want. You sign the papers. I know. You have the driver's license. You have the home, yes. the home insurance. Come on. Yes, you play all the, the fucking driver's... games. We're so tied into this fucking shit. It's doesn't mean we can't complain about it. <laughs> well, that's true. That's I mean, true. If I ain't bitching, I ain't happy. But it's, yeah. not, it's not like there aren't good things to it. I am not complaining about the overall thing. I'm saying that the details were lied to about the most important things and were delivered a, a portion of life. We could do so much better if we were fed the right fuel. And they know it. We wouldn't be stupid enough to fall for this fractional reserve banking crap. If everybody had a real education, they'd go, all right, get this fucker out of here. Hang him on the way out, too. Maybe put a bullet in each leg first and make him cry. And that's how serious. I'm telling you, these people argue and fucking bicker over football games. They go to violence over fucking sports. Can -hmm. you imagine how their brains would snap? If they knew the reality of what the government is doing to them. Whoa. It's 
you it's know, so hard any, to believe. Any professional sports is just like modern gladiators. Yeah, but it works. And I'm not judging it. I'm just saying that I'm aware of what what the purpose of it is. Whether you indulge it or not, that's your business. Now, I'm not talking at anyone or about anyone. I'm just using it as a you know standing point, talking point. You know, something to bitch about. Yeah. Because well, the illusion of large crowds having fucking power, you've got to have that sports arena thing going at huge concerts, 60,000 fucking people. Uh, get the fuck over it. It's too big. You know, Altamont proved big crowds are just, no, don't do that. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Isle of Wight, Woodstock, you know, they tried it and, it, and it showed right in the first few times they tried it. Oh, this is not going to end very well. Because we had that freedom thing going on when they started it. And now if you want to go to a concert, you've got to have a you know a DNA sample swab. And somebody's going to take a rubber glove to your ass to make sure you're not smuggling in any nuclear bombs. It's intrusive, vulgar. And people in lines are the nastiest fucking people. You know what's crazy is that the last concert that my daughters took me to, which I I must admit I enjoyed myself immensely. Uh, uh, uh. I had a really good time talking with people in line before we went in and had a grand time during the concert, had a great time walking back to the apartment after the concert. But that whole shit of having them let me look in your I mean, I was carrying just a little little thing that was just big enough to carry my cell phone, my ID, my ticket, and my smokes. That was pretty much all that was in, and I had to open it so that they could look, make sure I wasn't smuggling any nuclear waste in there. Yeah. Yeah. Before I could, and then you had everybody, and you didn't have a choice. Everybody had to walk through these body scanner things. Mm. Oh, it was like, you know what? You, what the you hell? Brought, you brought something up. Uh, that show I was talking about, Shali Lama doing, that was another thing they brought in that they discussed was uh, Galen Windsor was a big shot in the uh, nuclear when it was first in the 40s, 40s and uh -huh. 60s, right? This guy mm -hmm. made videos, and made claims, and this, that, and the other. And according to him, all this nuclear stuff is a scam. What they did was they made, like the Admiralty thing, like the uh, Social Security, like any other word game that, our, that the state plays with us, they did it with nuclear. And in his version of it, what they call waste is actually the product. They're hiding it. They don't want us to have it. So they renamed the, the goal waste so they could hide it from us. Mm -hmm. And it's as harmless as you can imagine. If they handled properly, they just lie about how you handle it. And this guy made videos showing this is his version of the, of the truth. And I tend to go with it. Shali Lama has this guy named Greg something on there on the 5th of this, uh, this month, two days ago. And they were talking about that particular guy. And they couldn't remember his last name. And I was like, oh, Windsor, I know this guy's story. I feel so smart. Yeah, and I I think I've seen a few of his uh, videos, actually. But we're so and conditioned, Miss Mary, all these years of uh, threat. No visual fucking proof of any fucking kind that you can really uh, look at and say, oh, I, I, that's def definitive. All these little hinty things on the internet for years about radio, about nuclear radiation. Then you hear other stories about the same fucking place and they tell you the exact opposite. So, I don't put it past the governments to uh, do one more time on us. Yeah. To keep the electricity alive because they make a fucking slave out of you easily with electric. Yeah. And it cut because of the source of the, the electricity that you're receiving in the first place. It makes us this way. Whatever way we are, that's unnatural and stupid and repulsive and all the negative shit, 
comes from mm-hmm. the, the shit that we eat and the electricity that goes through us. You know, what are we, 60% water. So, you know, you got to handle the electricity in your body just a certain way, blah, 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 blah. Well, there's so much more to it, but we're not told that. I always say that. We're not told that. No, they don't want you knowing that. I want to tell you that. <laughs> and even people that know this stuff, they're taught they're taught it in such a way that they just plain don't make the correlation. Right, 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 right. I was uh, in Scotland a couple years ago, <laughs> oddly enough. Anyway, I so I was in uh, at this pub, and one of the guys that I'd met is an electrician. We're jibber jabbering about little this, that, and the other. And uh, the kid, this new kid, he's an apprentice. Didn't mm-hmm. know who Tesla was. So we were both in shock. Wait a minute. You're an electrician in training, and you don't know who Nikola Tesla was. Oh, my. That that was it. I, what do you say? The guy's never heard, of, never heard of him. What What's that about? Wow. So there's there's the Scottish education system right there. Well, you no know. No better than the one I came out of. I can still remember... A time when I had no idea who Tesla was. Exactly. And you should. That's the whole fucking point. Edison was a freaking thief. And Tesla wasn't. Edison stole from Tesla. That's how they fucking started. Then he stole from them a second time because Tesla was a moron in business. He didn't, you know, uh, he was inexperienced in the worldly ways. Let's say that. And Edison was a fucking con man. Yeah. There you go. There, the proof is in, look at how we live, ACDC. Edison was a P.T. Barnum. But it worked. He but was just pretty much. Look at how they make the, the public. They mold the public into these, like, people that will uh, embrace that stupidity. Look at Trump. Trump is a freaking stupid individual. Good God, if he wasn't worth a lot of money, who'd listen to his ass? He's a nut job. But he's got $10 billion. So, hey, he must know something. Yeah, he knew where his father stood. <laughs> Daddy, I need some money. <laughs> yeah. Can I have $40 million, Dad? I want to buy a couple buildings downtown. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I think New York needs to be redone. I just want to rearrange the skyline a little bit. <laughs> Uh, well, this illusion that any one man actually does anything alone, it's not that way. It's just as, as ignorant as thinking one guy's going to build a freaking house by himself. Take him forever. No, you need a crew. You need an organization. You need a plan. You need materials. Need, 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 need. And here we are, 2020, and people think you push a button and there it is. Well... They're going to okay. breed curiosity and asking questions right out of those kids in school. They will never do it. They'll never dare do it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I've I've watched the, there's there's this little gal on YouTube and I think she's from China. Um where, you know, there are some videos where her her I don't remember if it was her father or her grandfather. I think it was her grandfather who basically built their house and then started building all the different parts around it. And then, um, I mean, it's it's kind of cool to watch the progression of it. But he still had like a hammer, which if you want to be technical, he didn't build it by himself because somebody else had to make the hammer, um, you know, stuff along the so for tools. But a lot of his tools he made himself as well. But still, he used nails. Well, somebody else made those nails, and so I, in the in the macro, no, he did not build it by himself because there's lots of other people that contributed to either the tools that he used or whatever. But in the micro, he built that place himself, and it's pretty freaking cool. And a lot of it was out of bamboo. So, What I'm saying is... I know, but... In the, in know, the modern day, people think that everything is instant. And they do think that everything is instant. Some people are that slow. They don't know. Well, 
They're yeah, not didn't taught. they have a study not too long ago where a goldfish actually has a longer attention span than humans do? <laughs> I mean, it's sad, but that some college and and whether it's true or not, I don't know. But that some college actually got grant money to study this and then came up with that, and it's like, wow. And I am Lone Frog found the found the at least the information. January 4th, 1903, Edison fries an elephant to prove his point. Topsy the elephant was electrocuted at Luna Park Zoo on Coney Island in 1903, captured on film by Thomas Edison. The event was one of a string of animal electrocutions. And that was done when the whole battle between direct current and alternating current was going on. Right. Because Edison was direct current Right. And Tesla and Westinghouse were alternating current. And alternating current actually wound up winning out. Right. And they also won the uh, rights to provide the electricity to a World's Fair. But then Edison said, you can't use my light bulbs. So Westinghouse <laughs> came up with his own light bulbs as well. <laughs> no, you've done, Just to tell you've done Edison, your reading? up here, buddy. Not only did we beat your ass, but we rubbed it in, too. I'm so proud of you, Miss Mary. You you do your homework and you come back and you go, hey, I know this shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, they used to electrocute dogs on the street corners well, to the, tell people how bad alternating current was. But the nasty side of all this stuff, okay, the listener, the person receiving this knowledge will go, oh, you're just saying that to make Edison look bad. <laughs> Whoa, take a drink. But, you know, that's the... Yeah. That's the kind of defense weapons that we're given, because the truth doesn't need defense. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's there's no need ever to defend something that is completely true. When you're screaming and yelling at somebody, and they're obviously in disagreement with you, I think at that point you're both wrong, and the truth doesn't matter, because that's not how you get to the answer by <laughs> violence, you know, and well, oh, well, screaming isn't violence. Well, yeah, it, it leads some people to punch you right in the fucking face. And screaming, is, screaming <clears throat> is violence against the ears. Depends on the well. There you go. But it depends on the person. People like. See, we're all different, Mary. We all got different levels of what we consider be say entertainment or pleasure. What irritates you doesn't bother me a bit, and vice versa. You know, it's like that asparagus thing. I don't want it, yeah, I don't like it. And then you try it a di different way than you ever tried it before, which is what people don't tell you, is try the same thing, but from another angle. You know? It'll be different. Hmm. Remember, you did say that you found one recipe to make the shit, that you, and you had some, it wasn't that bad. So there you go. That doesn't yeah. mean that, oh, every time you eat it, it's going to be wonderful, but the time they make it the way you like it, see, that's where we're, people, that's where we're at. There's something, the selfishness about us that we, we need it to survive, but we can sometimes take it a little too far, invade other people's little privacy bubbles with it, get people all riled up because I don't think the world is round, I have my doubts could be something different. Oh, you're a flat earther. I didn't say that. Well, yeah, you did. You just said it's not round. I said, well, it might not be round. <laughs> hmm. So then you get caught in that fucking loop that we're caught in on every subject, every topic, every day. <laughs> as long as you, inter you know, interact with other people and uh, make sure you look for the differences. Yeah. Because, yeah. by God, if you can find out where you're different, then you can stay separate forever. And it, it's it's like a, like an unwritten law. There's all these unwritten laws that we live by that we're very well aware of. That it makes me look at these written laws and wonder why you guys let it go so far. Uh, you have to engage it, Mary. Yes, yeah, you do. You do. Now, in, at home, they have found trickery and deceit as tools to engage the civilian. 
by the police state. And these things aren't legal, but people tolerate them, so they do them. And they do them under the guise of other crap that's not true either. Checkpoint, Missouri looking for illegal aliens crossing the border. Ma'am, let me see your ID. Hey, do I smell alcohol in your breath? <laughs> you smell alcohol? That's Sorry. what I mean is they, you know, they stop you looking for aliens crossing the border. And then, oh, I smell pot. Don't you smell pot, Johnson? Get the dog. I smell pot. Well, yeah. we didn't find well, any pot, but we found $8,000 in cash, and that motherfucker was going right to his drug dealer to buy $8,000 worth of pot. So we're going to arrest the money now. Let this bastard go, but we're going to keep his cash, baby. Yeah. And then you got to buy a lawyer to fight the state to get your property back. More money to get to chase money. Shameless. And you know who's behind all that? Loves it. Who's behind all that and loves it? Done. If I don't know. Done. True. Your POTUS, Aparinda. Oh, yeah. yeah. Orange Man. Yeah. Oh, uh, fuck all that. Come on. It doesn't matter. He's which, from the jerk party. Whichever idiot sits in that fucking seat, they're going to cook him like an egg. They don't get... Whoever owns the president, they don't give a fuck about that poor slob any more than you do. No. You know? And I don't know how anybody could get pleasure out of a life like that in the first place. It's like I don't the, understand why someone would want that position. Is that well or any of the shit that goes along with your you've all the constant nagging and complaining and you're the butt of jokes and the oh, why would anybody want to be in a position in society of that nature in the first place? Mm-hmm. Um because for some stupid ass reason, we've all been convinced that um, that that is something that we should aspire to. Anyone can be president. Okay, sure, anyone can be president. Does anyone want to be president? No. How do you know? That's what I mean. Is we don't know these other people. We just know the stories we're told about them, and the mm-hmm. crap that they say. It all seems scripted. Doesn't seem like not one of them ever says anything out of their mouth. That just comes out naturally. You know, they're, they're always reading scripts, practice rehearsed lines that they know, you know, committed to memory, so that they don't fuck up and screw up in front of the camera. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. every every. How many years have have you listened to other people snivel about oh these crooked politicians? Okay, if you truly believe in the voting system, then who put them there? Is that the point? The point who I was trying to make, putting them Mary, there? How, how long have you yourself heard the adults? When you were a child, don't you remember the, the grown-ups bitching just like we yeah. do now? It's the same fucking story. Well, well, and I used to do it, too, until I started realizing that, wait a minute, who puts them in there? You know, and that light bulb went off after listening to George Carlin Mm -hmm. and basically saying, you get what you deserve. (laughs) If you play along with the system, you get what you deserve. Can you prove that in Admiralty Court? Yeah, no. But do I want, do I even want to deal with Admiralty Court? No. No. I don't see. Well, that, why do I want to play with someone that I know already has a stacked deck and they're marked as well? Well, I figured out what keeps people tied to the hip to the state. <laughs> oh, you're not. What? Gonna, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I have I, a definitive answer to the question. What about? state attracts people to it so that they will hold on for dear life like it will keep them alive. And that is the 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 love of life it makes you think that the the medical thing that these bullshit con artists represent that you can't get without them is going to save you and keep you alive well, longer. Well, let me make my love. I'm just saying it's a collective herd mentality is what it is. That's what keeps most people in there. Oh, wait, you're not supposed to agree with me. Oh, okay, well, yeah, you caught me off guard with that, but I, I, 
But how I mean, I don't mean it badly at, at the people. I mean it badly at the system for deceiving the public instead of telling them the truth. These plants, if you do this and if you do that, blah, 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 but they don't do that. This pill will keep your balls swollen at 4 o'clock on Tuesdays. This pill will keep your, you know, what? Well, see, and that's the thing that a lot of people just plain don't get with the medical system. Side effects. What, once you start taking this pill, yeah. you're going to have to take it the rest of your life. Mary, Now, please. number one, they don't tell you how long your life expectancy just right. decreased. But have fun with it. me here. Define okay. side effects. What are side effects of taking a big pharma capsule? For any disease you're being treated for. The side effects are some effect that your body um, goes through that um, brings on another ailment slash symptom that also needs to be treated by the pharmaceutical industry mm. because they can't take you off of that other stuff because you're on <laughs> that the rest of your life. Well, I heard a doctor say it shorter. I'm sure. Oh yeah, but same same idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's it's like a a uh, allergic reaction, and that's how your body reacts to it. Your body is having an allergic reaction to whatever it is, and that's the symptom that it puts forth, or how you know how you can see that something is not reacting well. So instead of dealing with what's causing that they go oh let's let's put a band-aid on that symptom mm -hmm. oh wait that band-aid just caused a rash let's put another bigger band-aid mm -hmm. on that symptom right but that's pretty well, much how they do it what what the doctor said was side effects is defined in his opinion as all effects of a drug are side effects of a drug that side effects is a misleading uh, advertising gimmick to get your attention off what the fuck you're doing. Oh. Because if you went into looking, if, if you looked at this medical crap they do to us with the, the knowledge and the wherewithal of a sane individual from the start, not sick and weak at your weak moment when they get you, but smart enough to read the fucking paperwork, you'd never go along with this crap. It goes against everything. You know, we got nature, and then we got science, and then we got politics, crap like that. So all these broken down into groups. But the only one that stands in the end is the nature. Everything else, all the synthetic stuff falls apart eventually. Well, yeah, because your body's not designed to process synthetics. No, but we do really good, man, with the additives. I, I just added turmeric and uh, rosehip and baking soda. So I got this little thing I got. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of adding to it. But these powders, the natural organic fucking powders from plants that mm -hmm. I take, I'm 60, I'm going to be 61 if I make it to September, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm bebopping to the store to go get my groceries, you know, make a mile walk each way. And I, I kind of like it, but... Uh, I thought by the time I got to this age, at one point in my life, I thought, well, I'll be lucky to do this when I'm 60. Never meant to make it to 60. Well, now I got Cirk going, eh, keep it around 30 years. We're only through like six. So yeah. I got 25 years to go. Well, what I found out through the Internet, people like yourself and Larry Woods and Grimner and Moose Girl and Rob Wood, you know, the crew, reading all mm -hmm. the stuff, well, not everything that everybody puts up, but over the years. I've accumulated an arsenal of information to protect me from ever falling back into the uh, the loyalty to the state that whatever I did have, and I don't have that anymore. You know, it's not like a, I don't give a fuck. I, America can kiss my ass, but the people in it, I don't have a problem with any people. I got a problem with. The representation of those people is just sad. It's yeah. really bad. It's an embarrassment as an individual in a group because uh, the people that live in the country don't know that they're being 
ruled by Israel, basically. You can't get it through their head that they are. They think you're lying. I found this little link. I'm going to post this again. But I found this damn uh, link thing, pit, uh, meme. And it, show, it shows you the 50 states and which states are not influenced by Israel through legislation. And I went, wow, but 26 out of 50 are. 13 are pending. And in 11, there's no legislation introduced to date. Which doesn't mean they're not going to get it. Just they're, they're not telling you about it now. Look, the wheels of justice are slow. Huh? You know, and all that. Mm -hmm. But did I post it? I didn't post it. Or did I? Yeah, that's it. Right? The thumbnail. Thing. And it's, it's like, wow, why does America need the the support of the smallest fucking populated country in the whole planet. The biggest, mi the smallest minority of a group representation in the whole fucking world rules all the fucking world. And wow. Why is it when you speak up against it, which is hardly any simple ways to do it, not sound like a nut job, but when you do it, you're anti-Semitic. Not telling the truth about something. Oh no no no! You're you're just against the Jews. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's no different than racist. Right, but, but it the, works. It's the same card they're throwing out there. But it works because of the misunderstood history of the Jew. <laughs> all the misrepresentation over all these years brought us where we are now. It's a collective. Don't know fuck all. Believe that the. The Jews are being returned to the homeland. Are you out of your fucking mind? They didn't start there. That's <laughs> not where they're from. The, the people that are there aren't even Jews. They borrowed the tag. <laughs> yeah. and, and we're all being had like a bunch of idiots because if you go against what the big group says, just like the round globe, everybody laughs at you and calls names. You know you're stupid and all, all that kind of shit that goes along with it. But... Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people that just thinks, you know, if this stuff is indeed true, there's any doubt, deserves uh, to be brought up. And so what? So I'm wrong. If I'm indeed wrong, okay, all I ask for is proof that I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's got any. They just keep telling me stories. And look at this. And look at that. And that, that. That's made by a computer. What else you got, John? And if that doesn't work, then they start besmirging you. Oh, I don't you mind. You mean old poo poo head, I'm you. I'm a gas house or gas lighter. I gas light the RLM, according to certain people. <laughs> well, I have my have fan gas club, and baby. You light it? I don't know. It's what what it's a internet talk for I start bullshit that's not true based on people's weaknesses. You know, that I know I, it's I'm another, misdirecting it's another them way of through. calling you a troll. Yeah, yeah. So uh but you know, they, the people that do that, seem to represent the side I'm complaining about in the first place. So kind of, it's like washing your your, your drawers. You know? <laughs> well, you do realize that one man's troll is another man's gaslighter. It's that's what I meant. You know, some <laughs> wash your drawers. You think you're fucking special, sport? Just wash your drawers. Yeah. Well, I just always fall back on the. Man, for every finger you point at someone else, you Same get three thing. of them pointing right back at you. It, it's just on such a horrible level, we're so equal to each other. But depending on your indoctrination, where you were raised, your views on life, liberty, and pursuit of you know getting a penis, uh, <laughs> life can be interesting. Let me tell you, people. It's... Hmm. It used to be, hey. Once upon a time, the government said, life, liberty, and the pursuit of property. And then something changed, and they rewrote it, and now it's happiness. Just take the hat out of it. And just look for a penis, because if you're going to fall for this shit, I guess you deserve it. I, I don't know. How can you be kind to people that are so obviously getting their fucking ass handed to them? And in ways that... Doesn't seem like it affects you, but it does in other ways, like this war in Iran that's going to come. 
this has been planned for so many years. So I remember when John oh, McCain yeah. was dancing around singing Bomberan like a fucking moron. Well, let me inform you. Trump is planning to fucking do it. And he tweets about this shit like a 15-year-old girl talking about her first you know, orgasm on the damn internet. Like it's a matter of public interest. National. I break- find it more amusing to have him posting <laughs> pictures of the meal, but uh, yeah. Don't you yeah. find it kind of embarrassing that the, the big leader in your country tweets on Twitter like a 15-year-old stupid kid? And, re- and it reads that way, too. If you didn't know it was Trump, you could easily mistake that shit for the ramblings of some child. See, and I'm not embarrassed by that at all. I find it amusing. Oh, I'm totally... It, it has to actually matter to me in order for it to embarrass When, when I get called, hey, American, out, out in, here in Freddy Town, yeah, I get a little, oh, because I don't know. And are you mad in America? Is this the end? I'm going to finally meet my fate. Because I was born in that bit of fucking dirt. Hmm. And crap like that crosses my mind sometimes. Because America's done so much shit to so many places. It's just, wow. It's amazing I can go anywhere and not just constantly run into enemies. Well, yeah. But, uh... Fortunately for me, these people had their own history to live with. They don't know. They don't know half the fuck all about America, I know. They know TV America. Well, they know the Corporation of America. Right, and but you know if what? You live... I'm going to let you chit chat for just oh, a little okay. bit because okay, I, gotta, I got it. I got to check the door real fast. I'll listen for you when you get back. But uh, when uh, she's, let me see. Let me. What am I going to run? In? Let me look at my notes, and I'll go with bury the past and lie about the future. Because we were talking about Nikola Tesla, the RLM crew. These guys know Tesla stuff. There's a lot of electricians too. By the way, so uh, we've got a few people like myself. I'm not an electrician by any means, but I've worked with hot electricity and installed this and that, plugs, plugs, switches, lights, fans, shit like that. Simple stuff, but the aesthetics, the, the stuff that without the electricity, you don't need this crap. So it's kind of like a partnership, you know, and I had a partner that was... He was more into the you know, getting the wires and right color to this for that and all that and keeping track of all that sort of thing. And just telling me what to hook up to what. Put this put this box here and that light there. That seemed to work for me. I was task oriented. I was young. Well, not young. I was in my early, early thirties at the time, or late twenties or, or maybe it was forties. It's hard to remember it's been such a long run. But Mary said, give me a few minutes. I have to go check. So tonight's uh, episode was called Bury the Past and Lie About the Future. And me and Mary want to go over the notes here and see what we ever yabbered about. Oh, think logically. or put a link in there for your viewing perusal. And I've been on about Shali Lama and ZCY.com a couple times. Oh, we returned to Black's Law and the 13th Amendment. Oh, we talked about man-made equals waste for profit. Uh, man-made, you know, synthetics equals, when you do that, when, when you change the uh, the natural side of it, in my opinion, like the way they con you with this cotton. Cotton is a filthy mess to manufacture. It's wasteful. The, the plants suck up a shitload of water. It, it goes on and on and on. And there's nothing that you can do with hemp that that you need cotton to replace it for. But the thieves in control, they know that they make more profit. The more wasteful we are, the more profit there is. Because you do things more than once. Or you'll do 12 things instead of one thing. And then you'll create something that has a short life expectancy. Instead of this thing will last 100 years, which they could do. Here's the car, boom, made out of hemp, everything, bumper to bumper, runs on hemp. There you go. Last you 100 sorry. years. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was my just hand, ranting about no. stuff. Oh, my hand pan is delivered. Yay! Your, I'm so what? Hand pan, it's like a drum. Oh, yeah, I remember when you said you ordered that so you could be the next Ringo Starlet. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be a... It, it'll be like a Hindu or Eastern. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of Ringo Starr, but yeah. Well, uh, as a closet drummer, I recommend it. And you've got property, so that, that always helps, too. It helps the yes. drummer a lot because drums are fucking loud. But uh, guitars, you can play guitar a little quiet. But drums, not so much. Yeah. So I wish you a lot of luck with your little uh, thing in my bobber hoochie. Cause yeah, it's gonna be it's going to be fun. It'll be interesting. I I will learn something new and and uh, yeah. Or you're gonna have the most expensive paperweight you've ever purchased. Well, you know, if nothing else, um, my grandkids will have a good time making noise with it. Hmm. Oh, of course. So yeah, you know, people. People don't do things, and sometimes in their lifetime, I've heard them say things like, oh, I wish I would have done that. And I've tried to see myself where I, where have I ever been where I say, I wish I would have done that. And it would be more as, it was something I tried to do, but it didn't, it didn't succeed. But I tried to do it, so that's like halfway there. That's good enough for me. At least I attempted it. But to live a life where I, I never tried that. Oh, I wonder what that's like. I don't have that. Uh, well, you know, and I I just got to the point where it's like, you know what? I'm a big girl. I can figure this out. And, uh, yeah. So I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do this afternoon is I'm going to unpackage and And I'm sure I will have to clean it up because packaging and all that fun crap. Oh, yeah. Bubble and do wrap. a little bit of playing. Oh, she's going to, I'm telling you. We're in trouble now. I'm going to make noise and probably make my critters go crazy. Uh, hey, we only got 10 minutes left. On, or is it, wait, what time did I... Uh, I'm so fucked up on the time. Eight, ten. Yeah, we got 10 minutes left, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Just uh, Yeah. I get to smoking. You know me and my clock. I, I hate the clock. <sighs> if I could do away yeah. with anything in this life, it would be time. Fuck you and your damn time. Time robs you of all the fun in life. You'll find that out. If you get old enough, you go, wow, they stole it all. Every fucking minute they could steal, they took. But you don't see it when it's happening. You see it through hindsight. And that's the problem with life. And, and uh, all the bullshit stories we're brought, brought, brought up with. And, and the crap that they're taught to chase. Military. Uh, are you out of your fucking mind? Wow. If you, if you knew it at, at 15 or 16, what you know at 60 about life, you live a different life. <laughs> oh, if I knew at 15 or 16 yeah. what I know now, I would have been such I probably would not have lived to now because people probably would have just drop kicked me off a cliff. Well, it's a good thing that you are compliant. I'm telling you. Because when it's, you're. It's a good thing I, I live in a flat area, is what it is. How so? Oh, I don't know. You know they, they do explain that, that we're so small as humans that, of course, you can't see the curvature in the horizon because you can't stand tall enough to see it. Not water's flat for 800 miles because something ain't round. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not why. It's so big that in some places everything's flat. See that? What? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, you don't see the curvature. Well, I do understand that elevation-wise or sea level-wise, yeah. um, in like ninety-five miles, basically where my mom lives to where I live, the elevation rises over a thousand feet, but you don't notice it. Because it's so gradual over that thousand miles, so I understand that right. The, the numbers, yet. the numbers don't match up though. For so many no, miles, don't. you're supposed to get so much curvature according to the ex, the, the estimated are, size of the planet. No, oh, wait a minute. This is what I mean. You're yeah. trusting all these people that lied to you about everything else, everything else that you know has turned out to be shit, and they taught it to yeah. you. But this thing's true. Thing. <laughs> yeah, the same people that came up with the uh, uh, common core shit, <laughs> or the one, sh- or the shit that they used on us. What, whatever organized way that we do things is, that is your problem right there. 
These things weren't weren't intended to be done in a mass scale, herding us together in groups like a bunch of fucking cattle. <laughs> That's the illusion. It was supposed to be done by your mom and your dad. You know? Yeah. But big things got bigger and people found ways to trick us into believing things that are just bullshit. <laughs> They crushed the family. Now everybody in, <clears throat> in the uh, public eye, transgender, homosexual, bisexual, binary, some new thing. I'm a toaster. <laughs> but you know, anything but whatever the, the beginning was. Oh, no, no, no. That's all different now. No, it's not. The definitions, just like the law, the definitions are different, but the game's still the same. Just got more yeah. variety. Oh, yeah, sure. There's more nut, fruit and nuts in this bowl of cereal than there was 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah. There's more of us. Look at how they overcrowd. What kind? This, if this was not anything more than a laboratory experiment, I'd be mad. But I know what it is because it's operated the same way as experimenting with rats to see what they'll do. Well, uh, I just, uh. But one of their problems they're going to have is like, Pelosi's got like a big, uh, like a grape vineyard out in, out in the north, in, uh, California. But she's also got a house in the city. <laughs> so if she went to her house in the city, 5,000 people decided to come by for a drink. <laughs> what's, yeah. what's she going to do? You know, and, and they're pushing society verbally this way, telling them, they're instructing them to be violent, and this and that, and they're encouraging all the negative, and they're depriving them of necessary nutrients to sustain a healthy life so they'll be crazy in the fucking head indeed. And here we are. <laughs> mm-hmm. 2020 is going to be a massacre. Got anything to close with, Miss Mary? Um, don't believe everything you hear and only half of what you see. <laughs> oh, wow. There's an original one for you. Okay. Well, <laughs> eh, I can't expect a jewel every time. Eh. But, yeah, well. Hey, you came along to help me out tonight with the In a Perfect World podcast. And I, I do prefer to do the shows with somebody else, so. I always consider it bailing me out. And I'm not going to not do a show, but I prefer to do it with a partner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is much more fun doing with someone that you can interact live on the radio with. Yeah. yeah I just thought a proper thank you might be in order in a perfect world. <laughs> Well, but thank you for letting me play along. I, it really has been fun. I couldn't stay focused on one topic, but maybe a door table time we can we can bring that. See, this Black's Law thing has got so many tentacles attached to it that we could always talk about it and never say the same fucking thing twice. True, but Thanks. you know, all yeah. of all of the machinations, all of the <laughs> all of the different things that are going on right now in yeah. this whole. And I I really am to the point where I just call it all the poison for profit system. Whether they're poisoning your body or poisoning your mind, one way or another, it's a poison for profit, and you are the one that's the short end of the stick. <laughs> yeah. If in fact, if in fact you're aware of that concept, you can find a way to not let it work you so badly. So not that you're ever going to be free of it, but that. It can't hurt you because you know it's there. It won't ever surprise you. Hey, where'd that come from? <laughs> so yeah. one of those things. You you know this elephant's in the room, and if you dare to speak about it, people are going to hate you. So, mm-hmm. but we have uh, RLM and a few radio people I to listen to that think like we do about these particular topics, and we're scattered too. We don't all agree with each other about every fucking thing. But we do seem to be headed down the same road. Yeah. Seeking yeah. the the real true answer to a real true question, as opposed to the government said so, they wouldn't hurt me. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the uh, government? Oh, that's, that's uh, uh, that mythical creature. <laughs> Yeah. That mass hypnosis that we yeah. all believe in, that, that that's our boogeyman. The government yeah. is always the boogeyman. I want to be a boogeyman. I can never get to be a boogeyman. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have a great rest of your day.